Drew, where were you last night when you found out about the rankings and uh, what what were you doing, what you're feeling about it? Um, I had grabbed some training table and I was over in the engineering library doing some uh, homework with my roommate and working on my senior design project. So did you get a text? Uh, somebody text you about what the ranking was? Or? Yeah, I, I kind of heard through some of the guys and um, just some of the, the chatter going on. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Drew, what's the strength and conditioning program done for you this season? Um, I think it just continues to allow us to become stronger as the season goes on. I think a lot of programs are probably focused on maintenance throughout the year and, and just keeping their guys uh, ready to play, whereas um, our, our staff rather has really focused on us uh, getting stronger and growing as the season progresses. How much stronger do you feel now, uh, first week in November, than maybe this time last season? Oh, definitely stronger. I've kept my weight this year, whereas in the past you typically lose – five pounds. I haven't lost any weight this year. Um, strength numbers continue to go up. And so I, everything seems to be on the up and up. And I, I, I certainly feel that. Coach Kelly said yesterday about talking about your, your speed squats on Monday. W what, what are those Monday sessions like? And, and can you give us an example? Like, what are your speed squat numbers? Yeah, the Monday lifts are brutal. I'm still sore from Monday lifts. We, uh, we really crushed the lower half. Um, and, and do a lot of different um, mechanics in terms of squatting, um, explosiveness, so doing those speed squats, measuring our power output, so the weight we're lifting times the velocity we're moving it at, um, and, and do a lot of different lifts that really that hit certain different areas for different position groups. A lot of some single leg stuff um, to kind of isolate you in terms of how you move. You know, you're never really moving with two feet on the ground. It's kind of with one. So a lot of different specialized lifts and stuff. Are Mondays always tough in the weight room? Yeah, we, we do our lower body earlier in the week to give ourselves time to recover heading into Saturday. And then do you, like, you get Sunday off. Do you know Monday's coming? And as, as soon as Monday comes in the weight room, it's, it's going to be a grind the rest of the week. Yeah, it's, it's a grind, but it's, it's what we want. Um, we've seen, I think, the benefits from – you know, the challenge in the weight room and not necessarily just going in there to maintain and, you know, roll out and, and, and do the things that we have in the past. Um, so guys see it as, yeah, it's tough, but we're so we're so used to it now. This is, you know, our 11th month of doing it. And so um, it's uh, it's kind of becoming second nature to us just to go in there and attack it. How long did it take you to maybe have the buy in for Coach Bayless's program as far as, OK, this is going to work for me. It's going to make me a better player in the long run. Um. I mean, I think I, within the first few weeks, I think he gave a presentation in January when we came back. Um, and you could just hear the humility in his voice of how thankful he was to be here at Notre Dame um, and what it meant to him to be asked to be our strength coach. And I think, you know, from that moment, it made me slightly curious of, you know, wow, I, I think I really appreciate the, the way this guy presented himself. And I'm, I'm going to see if his actions kind of back up the way he spoke tonight. And I think... You know, he hasn't failed to back that up yet. Thanks. Yeah. Drew Retton earlier. Uh, you said the other night that uh, you, you reiterated what we've heard you guys say before, that your goals are to try and win a championship and, and graduate the players on the team. Uh, when the rankings come out and, and you see that there are undefeated power teams well below you guys, does, does that give you validation maybe that what you guys have done at this point is, is exactly in line with what your goals are? Yeah, I think I think it validates it a little bit. It's always exciting. You can't deny the emotions of it, but you know the way I see it is, if we lose to Wake on Saturday, you know we're out of that that picture. And so we've, like Coach Kelly said, we've been in a one game playoff um, since our one point loss to Georgia, and we we continue to view it as that. And so um, it's exciting, but we have to beat Wake, and um, we've got a lot of great opponents coming up um, in Miami, Navy, um, Stanford, um, and then obviously Wake on Saturday, and so. Uh, we got to continue to take care of business to achieve what we want. Yep. Drew, up here. Could you speak a little bit to, to Coach Elko and sort of the preparation that he's able to get you guys wired in the right way for trick plays or unconventional looks? And are there instances throughout the season that you could point to where you just felt like, okay, we were locked in on something that was supposed to catch us off guard, but because of the way Elko goes about installing the defense, it didn't? Yeah, I think when you get into the complexities of, you know, offenses nowadays, there's so many 
you know, gizmos and gadgets and ways they trade and motion the line to do different things. And I think the way Coach Elko has gone about it has really been allowing each position to specialize in what they need to know for the week. And so there might be stuff that's going on on the backside for the whip safety in the boundary corner that, you know, are a big issue for them that week that I, I really have no, like, I don't even know about. Um, and so I think just each player's buy-in to their position and understanding of how they have to play to help our defense win has been the biggest key in us being able to be successful and guys are doing their job on a day-to-day -day basis. How about for you at Rover, are there a couple plays, you know, maybe last week, maybe against USC that jump out? It's like, this is exactly what I repped in practice. I know exactly what this is going to be before it actually happens. Yeah, so we've had a we've had a couple instances this this year. Um, it started at Boston College, where you know I'll be aligned on, you know, in the apex between number two and then a line of scrimmage, and two will jet motion to the boundary, and I'll slide into the box. And Boston College took that and they flared their back out really fast, and I have to zoom him to the flat, and you know, as necessarily as I'm sliding into the box, my eyes aren't necessarily on the back; they're on my gap and my run fit, um, and so. NC State did the exact same thing this past game. Samuels was in the backfield. Uh, they jetted the guy out and tried to bubble Samuel out, and then they ended up throwing the slant to the field. But that's the exact look we've been repping since that Boston College game to prepare for that. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, Drew. Um, kind of looking at it from a perspective of two years ago when you guys were in the college football playoff, I think you came in at fourth and – Snapchat video that went viral of the team celebrating and you guys, you know, moving forward to this year, it seems it's a little more, it's excitement is a little more reserved. Is that maybe something you learned from in 2015? Because obviously the ultimate goal wasn't accomplished from you guys. Yeah, I think every, every moment's a learning opportunity. And for those of us who were there, um, remember that and remember um, maybe our emotions, you know, getting the best of us there. Um, but I think we've been trained this year to just realize that, you know, in order for us to be where we want to be, we have to we have to attack practice today. In order for us to be where we want to be, we have to beat Wake on Saturday. Um, and that's the only way that we can get where we want to get. Um, and so um, I've been I've been surprised with our football team this year. We've got a lot of young guys playing, a lot of young guys on our team. Um, and they they have, for the most part, seemed to be able to quiet the noise. And that's been very encouraging. And uh, kind of going back to the strength and conditioning and specifically for you of how you've gotten stronger. But, I mean, just this year for you overall from what has happened in the previous two years, how much are you just appreciating this process that you're able to make the impact you are and, um, each, each and every Saturday? Yeah, I think, I think I really appreciate. Honestly, it's a holistic you know, thing for me. I, I really feel... Um, incredibly blessed to be a part of a, a team like this. I've played sports since I was three years old, and I've never been part of a what feels like a championship team um, to where everyone from the nutrition staff to the strength staff to the third string guys giving looks, um, everyone is so bought in and, and just on their job and, and what it means for them to do their job. No one's looking for the praise or glory. Um, if you look at our defense, like, there's no one person making all the plays. Everybody's contributing and making big plays. Um, you know, Julian Love having the pick six this past game. Sean Crawford punching the ball out at Michigan State, a pivotal point in the game and recovering it. Um, Khalid having two sacks, you know, two games ago. It's just different guys every week and each guy buying into their role and our coach is doing an incredible job of putting us in the position to be successful. Yeah, and I was going to ask you about Julian, too. Um, just uh, his personality sort of jumps out of the page. I'm um, always very energetic and charismatic. Um, just what he's like as a teammate and playing with him on defense. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a very, he's a kid that carries himself with great humility and just always laughing, always smiling, um, always a joy to be around. Uh, guys really enjoy being around him, never negative, always positive. Um, and so I, I think what you see from him is, is what you get or what we get in the locker room. And then the type of playmaker that he is, too. Um, two big pick sixes for you guys this year. Um, pretty athletic uh, in the defensive mm -hmm. backfield for you guys. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an athlete. He can make the, make the place happen with the ball in his hands. Um, and so 
he continues to make plays for us and, and, and to be electric for us. Um, and I think, you know, we, we obviously we look at the pick sixes and, and those stand out, but just the plays he makes downfield seem, you know, simple and they're not. Um, on a play-to-play -play basis, it makes him a special player.